Hi everyone and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DiTulio. And I'm Shelby Hill. Today's Sports Zone reaches a major milestone as we kick off our 10th season right here in the Brick City. You know, Shelby, over the last two years, the RIT men's hockey team experienced a few major milestones of its own. Two years ago, the Tigers clinched their first trip to the NCAA tournament and reached their first Frozen Four in school history. As Emily Clark reports, last season, a former Tiger continued RIT's string of firsts when he reached the highest level in hockey. Last season, former RIT hockey player Chris Tanev was presented an opportunity most players only dream of. After leaving school following his freshman year, Tanev briefly took the ice with the AHL's Manitoba Moose before receiving the call up to the NHL's Vancouver Canucks. Um, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I was very excited and um, I had a ball out there as a dream come true. What was it like playing in your first pro game and what was running through your mind? I'm just, just trying not to make a mistake out there and um, just trying to have fun and, and enjoy the moment. But the moment and the game were clearly different from his days at RIT. The games are more controlled, the, the guys are bigger, you, got, you have to play your position basically to a T and not, not deviate from the game plan and it's just a, a little bit of a step up. Good hard hit. We talked about it earlier. So how do you stay so focused and so calm with all the pressure and the attention? Um, it's, it's just, just how I play and do nothing special. That's how my personality is and I just just trying to en enjoy the game when I go out there and it's, it's just hockey when you get on the ice. Tanev played in 29 regular season games. He even took the ice in the playoffs and came within one win of hockey's top prize, the Stanley Cup. So how difficult is it to get to that point in the Stanley Cup um, Finals? It's, it's very difficult. There's 32 teams and you play 82 games in the regular season and then you got to win another 16 to, to get into, to win the Stanley Cup. So it, it's a long grind and it's tough on your body and but but that's why that's why you're playing to, to win the Stanley Cup and we came real close but um, unfortunately we didn't win. And down to the ice he goes. The puck wound up going into the net. It's three Short yeah, it's, you obviously want to win win one of those last two games and, and win the Stanley Cup, but uh, you take it as a learning experience and after a few days have, have passed by, you'll, it's something you always remember, but hopefully you learn, f learn from and get there in the future again. As one of the youngest players in the league, Tanev is hopeful this is just the start of what has almost felt surreal. So when you took your first step on the RIT campus, did you ever dream that everything would have happened as it has hockey-wise in the past year for you? Uh, no, I, I definitely didn't think it would happen. Um, it, it's been pretty crazy. It's, it's been a wild ride, and um, hopefully I improve my game and, and get better on the ice. The Canucks management talks so highly of you. Do you expect to be starting with them next season or back in the AHL? Um, I'm just going to be working hard all summer, get to training camp, and, and do my best out there going to try and make the the big club and hopefully I do but if I if I don't that that's fine uh, definitely need to get stronger um, definitely need to improve my shot and there's there's definitely parts of parts of my game that I need to improve a lot to uh, be there the whole year or be there even for a little bit in addition to Chris Tana, four other former Tigers were invited to NHL training camps this fall. Steve Penazzato joined Tana in camp with the Canucks. Tyler Brenner skated with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Bobby Raymond was with Ottawa, while goaltender Jared DeMichael attended camp with the defending Stanley Cup champion, Boston Bruins. Still to come on Sports Zone, three RIT students go on a journey of a lifetime, and the Tigers earn the top spot before the puck even drops on a new season. For the last five seasons, RIT and Air Force have owned the Atlantic Hockey Association, so it should be no surprise that the defending regular season champion Tigers and tournament champion Falcons are once again picked to finish atop the AHA standings. Our very own Shelby Hill caught up with the Tigers and previews the upcoming season.
last year, how upsetting was it to watch Air Force continue and see your season kind of end abruptly? Yeah, it was really disappointing. You know, some people asked if it stung the defeat and that, but it was just uh, disappointing uh, when you know, whenever your last game ends with a loss. But uh, uh, having said that, I was really happy with the way we played in that particular game. We uh, outshot them pretty bad and, and lost one nothing. We just couldn't score a goal. and. Uh, you have a bit of a hangover uh, from that loss for a little bit. The feeling at the end of the game last year, losing one nothing in front of our home crowd and at Blue Cross, and it just, it's, it's not a great feeling at all. and It's hard to describe. And so are you going to use that loss as motivation for this year? Definitely. Uh, they're one of the teams that we, you know, look to beat every year, and they're one of the stronger teams in our division. So, I mean, it's definitely going to be motivation, and hopefully we can get the win back and make it back to the tournament. You lost some pretty great seniors last year. How is the team making up for that? Just bringing in good recruiting class and the freshman class. I'm, from what I've seen so far, they can play at the same level that our seniors have played. We're, we just got to wait and see who's going to step up this year and who's going to sort of fill those roles of like Favin and Brenner and those, those type of players. Uh, we lost our top two goal scorers and point getters. Uh, we lost a great role players with Sean Murphy and Mike Janda and uh, Yanni. And, I mean, just five great guys, uh, always in the locker room, the loudest and, and most positive. So it's going to be tough to replace them, but uh, I think my senior class will do a pretty good job of that this year. So can you tell me about the freshmen? Well, you know, it's going to be interesting how they adapt. We've got uh, starting in goal, uh, Jordan Rumi, that uh, comes in very uh, highly thought of. We, we certainly think a lot of him, and I think he's going to challenge uh, 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 two goalies and Shane and Josh that uh, have uh, really done very well for us. On defense, we brought in one defenseman uh, to join the seven that we returned. So it's, it's going to be a difficult task for uh, Stu Brownell, who's in that position, but uh, someone that we believe in and is going to help us uh, this year, and if not this year, in our future years. Definitely have a lot of confidence in them, um, just from the few scrimmages we've had in our captain's practices. They look pretty good. Each of them bring uh, something different to the table. I have a good feeling that they'll be able to step right in and fill some holes for us and um, start their... Uh, learning curve and their growth from uh, from day one. Uh, the freshmen are very good this year, very excited. Um, this year is probably the most excited I've been out of the, the two previous years uh, about our freshmen coming in. They're very skilled and all of them can step in and play right away. And as a senior, you've seen this team grow. What do you think are some of your strengths and weaknesses? I think one of our biggest strengths is our uh, team defense. I think we play pretty good in the defensive zone. and. Our goaltending has been phenomenal ever since I've been here and I can just see it continue to grow with Ruby and Watson taking over when Shane leaves and I mean our offense has always been pretty top notch but I think since I've been here our team defense has progressed really well. Some of our strengths would definitely be our speed again uh, that's always one of our strengths every year is our speed and and uh, our playmaking and our work ethic are, are huge strengths and then some of our weaknesses probably as going to be goal scoring and, and stuff like that, like losing Brenner, like I said, where he scored a lot of goals for us last year and over his career. So we're going to have to see who's going to fill those voids and score some goals. So what are your expectations for the team this season? Our goal is to go to the NCAAs. Um, you know, uh, we say that respectfully to all our opponents uh, in that uh, we know we're going to get stiff competition and it's a, a very tough thing to accomplish. Definitely same as last year and the year before get back to the NCAA tournament that's always been our goal since I've been here and uh, I think if we just keep that in our minds we'll achieve it I know we came up short last year and then two years ago when we went to the Frozen Four it was just a magical thing but uh, we we definitely need to and will get back to the NCAA tournament. Now don't forget that RIT Sports Zone is once again your home for hockey this season. Head to RITSZ.com and click on Hockey Central for the latest hockey news, highlights, interviews, and more. This spring, Rob Grow will begin his 20th season as RIT's baseball coach. During his tenure, Grow has won more games than any of his predecessors. And while selling RIT and the baseball program to potential recruits has never been a problem before, it's an even easier sell now. SportsZone's Jeff Blossom explains.
Rob Groh's message to recruits these days is plain and simple. You want to live the dream? All right, come here and we'll give you a chance to learn from guys that know how to get there. Greg Cagle and R.D. Long bring a wealth of experience to RIT. If you want to be a pitcher, Greg will make you the best possible pitcher. You know, a position player, R.D. is going to get you better and better and better, bigger, stronger, faster, uh, better baseball player. So we've got guys that can give you a path to play beyond college now. So, so when we're recruiting now, we talk to kids about the academic opportunities, the co-op, um, how great RIT is academically. We've always been able to talk about that. Now we're adding on that level of, if you want to play after college, we've got guys here that can help you get there too. Kegel pitched professionally for 11 years, including three seasons in the majors with the Detroit Tigers. Three called Kegel with a beautiful fastball. Kegel is really pitching effectively. Nothing that I talk about I invented. It's all things I was smart enough to listen to other coaches that had been around the game a long time. It took me a long time to realize that uh, if you can slow this game down, you're going to be a lot more productive and a lot more successful. And I think that for young players, I think that's the hardest thing. I think that the experiences that, that we were able to have allows us to hopefully influence the younger players and the college level athletes to explain to them, you know, look, we've struck out, we've given up home runs, we've made mistakes. And I think to be able to, to explain that to them that, you know, it's, it's really, again, you know, I'm, I'm throwing quite a few cliches around, but it's not whether you get knocked down, but whether you get up. Coach Long works with RIT's position players. He played six seasons in the Yankees minor league system where he developed a tireless work ethic thanks to future Hall of Famer Derek Jeter. And a beautiful putt. Derek Jeter by far, by far, uh, it's, it's, it's so by far influenced me in such a way it's unbelievable as far as what you have to do. I started going through a workout program every day with him, which was a weight training program. First we go on the field at 9, we do all of our stuff till 12, we go into the weight room at 1 and lift till 3 o'clock. I had never done anything like that religiously. This boy, regardless of how late we were up, would be at that field ready to go at 9 o'clock. My time with Jeter, though, kept me in the league for six years instead of being cut after two. Cagle and Long not only share similar experiences, but now share similar philosophies as RIT assistant coaches. We coach very similar here at school. I'm not a babysitter. We are here as support, and I can't want it worse than my my players want it and I think that that's what he's talking about with Derek was nobody was there to tell Derek here's a guy on rehab and at that point let's face it in baseball one thing you know is when you're hurt you get forgotten very easily so it's up to you to get yourself pull yourself up by the bootstraps and go out and do your work we use this all the time this analogy there is it's not an accident you put yourself in a good position to have success success will come don't expect it to just come because you're talented first round pick this, that, or the next thing, because there's been somebody along the way who came along who was just as talented, just as rich, just as connected as you were. They're on the same page because they've, they've only had the same experiences. You know, they went through pro baseball, right? So now it's just putting that into a college system and making sure that these guys on a daily basis get that work done and really understand what it takes. So, um, so they both contribute an awful lot. I couldn't imagine um, on a daily basis if they weren't here, um, you know, how much different it would be. You know, our, our players are fortunate that they have special guys involved in the program. Over the summer, three RIT students experienced the journey of a lifetime. As Kristen Clock discovered, it was a ride with a purpose for these Pi Kappa Phi brothers that span nearly 4,000 miles over 67 days. The only disability in life is a bad attitude. This was the daily mantra for TJ Rogers, Victor Santiago, and Alex Dunner as they traveled cross country on a journey of hope. It all started back in uh, 1978 with uh, Bruce Rogers, who was a member of our fraternity, Pi Kappa Phi. He was doing a cross-country bike trip and decided that you know he would do it in the name of people with disabilities. Ever since then, it's become so much bigger and it's grown exponentially every year. Um, this past year, we had right around 130 people and it's branched out from his one original route to three separate routes. What are the three separate routes? 
The three separate routes are the North, the South, and the Transamerica. The Transamerica route starts in Seattle and goes to Washington, D.C. And the North and South start in San Francisco and go to Washington, D.C. as well. Pi Kappa Phi is actually the only fraternity to own and operate its own philanthropy. So Push America was started by Pi Kappa Phi. And uh, you know, we just seek to raise funds and awareness for people with disabilities. The mission statement of Push America is to build leaders of tomorrow by assisting people with disabilities today. The three Tigers were all crew members who were responsible for the safety of the cyclists. What goes into making sure they get from San Francisco to Washington safely? There's a lot of logistics and a lot of planning that goes behind it. Um, us crew guys, we get directions for every single day of the trip. So our binders are about like this thick. And uh, again, the night before we scout, make sure that the roads are fine. And if we need to do a detour, we'll have to write it out and we have to find a detour on our own. As the long and tiring journey came to a close, the Tigers began to realize just how life-changing their experience was. What was it like arriving in D.C. and finally finishing the 67-day journey? Hearing about it from the brothers who've done it before and actually experiencing it is totally different. That day comes and you have all three routes getting together. All the cyclists are in a road and just driving through the city, people are just like honking and yelling because some people don't know what's going on, but they see that the cops are leading this, so it's got to be important. And then they're once you get closer and closer to the Capitol building, people just multiply. There's people holding signs for like, we love you or um, we missed you, glad you're back. And there's people just cheering. They were there because you all went through the trip together. And as soon as we got out of the van and started walking through the crowd of people and just having moms and dads come up to me and saying, thank you for getting my son home. Thank you for helping him get here safely. It's just like, wow. <laughs> it's one of those things that it just hits you hard and you never forget it. Zeta Tau Alpha and Phi Kappa Psi organized the 16th annual Mud Tug. 155 teams participated in the event, helping to raise over $10,000 for the Hillside Family of Agencies. So how are you personally involved in Mud Tug? I'm the co-chair for Zeta Tau Alpha, who is one of the co hosts of Mud Tug, the other one being Phi Kappa Psi. Well, we organized the whole entire event, got everybody involved, all the sponsors and everything, so we're pretty much running the whole entire thing with our uh, fraternity and sorority. And how much planning goes into this event? Um, uh, we started planning last spring, so spring, summer, and then up until now. I hear freshmen when they come in for their first day for orientation week saying, I can't wait to go to Mud Tug. I hear people walking on the quarter mile saying, I can't wait for Mud Tug. It's great. Everyone looks forward to it. And what exactly is Mud Tug? It's a 10 on 10 tug of war competition over a huge mud pit. You have the play pit here and uh, just brings together the RIT community. Winner gets free tickets to the Far East Movement concert. And do you know how many teams showed up today? As of last night, 95 were registered. Hopefully there were more today, so probably over 100. The whole entire campus is involved, uh, faculty, staff, students, and it's fun to see everybody get out together, um, Greek life, clubs, organizations, freshmen, see what the RIT community is actually like. What got you out here today? Well, one of my best friends is DJing, and they were making a team for Mud Tug, so I said, why not join it? I've never been there, and I'm having a great time. And what's your favorite thing about Mud Tug so far? Getting really dirty and running around covered in mud. I love it. And of course, winning the tug of war part. That part's cool too. Well, we got to go first. We got to tug against the dream team, and I uh, that was pretty awesome. And, and did you guys win or did you lose? We killed them. We absolutely killed them. I am thrilled. I have been waiting so long for this day, and I could not be happier. <laughs> Well, that does it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone. Don't forget you can stay up to date with Sports Zone by following us on Twitter and liking us on Facebook. So until next time, thanks for joining us here in the zone.